Hey everybody, John Finn, Church Without Walls International, CWOWI.org, and our website in the EU, CWOWI.eu. Go to our main website here in the U.S., sign up for my weekly thoughts, which is a weekly teaching that comes out on Fridays by email. You'll be blessed. It's on a variety of subjects, good balanced teachings, oftentimes that you don't hear elsewhere, food for thought. And find out about House Church at our website. Uh, 10 question and answer videos, information, uh, audio teachings, podcasts, worship, uh, all, all there for you, cwowi.org. Uh, today, talking about two things. Number one, how do we balance scripture with our spiritual experiences? And then also, which version of the Bible? How do we discern how to properly read or which version to use? And I'd like to take you to the back in history to think for a minute about living in the first century. What if you lived right after the day of Pentecost? After the day of Pentecost, you did not have the New Testament. In fact, Paul would not write his letters for another close to 20 years. And, and Luke, the same thing, wasn't written, the Gospel of Luke and the Book of Acts wasn't written for 20 or almost about over 30 years. Uh, the Apostle John didn't write 1st, 2nd, 3rd John in the Book of Revelation and his Gospel until around the year 90 or so. That means that Pentecost happened around the year 33. That means they've gone about 60 years without knowing the Gospel of John or 1st, 2nd, 3rd John in the Book of Revelation. Matthew and Mark were the first ones to, to write the stories of the Gospel and that got circulated around to the believers who were meeting in homes, home churches. But <coughs> you couldn't refer to the book of Romans. You couldn't refer to the book of Ephesians to find out who you were in Christ and your righteousness in him. If you were a new believer right after the day of Pentecost, and you didn't, and, and as the gospel spread throughout the Roman Empire, you had to rely on your walk with the Lord. You know, John 17, 3, what Jesus said is true, and you had to rely on that. In John 17, 3, Jesus said, He's praying to the Father, and he's saying, this is eternal life, to know you, the only true God, and your Son, Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Eternal life is to know the Father God and to know the Lord Jesus. That is the basis for your faith, not ink on a page. And there are people running around fighting and arguing over which version of the Bible and, and, and things of that nature. And then we've got a whole nother class of people who, who, who have all sorts of spiritual experiences and they elevate that above scripture. And I'm here to bring some balance and some food for thought. Do you know that in English we have, over four, we have about 450 translations and uh, paraphrases of the Bible? That's right, in the English Bible, oh, about 450 to choose from. And yet there are people who are arguing saying, oh, the King James Version is the only one or stay away from the NIV. And, and certainly the Living Bible is a paraphrase. It's not, even, it's not even chapter and verse. It's a paraphrase of what one man thinks the scripture says. It's, it's paraphrase. And so how do, you, how do you weigh it out? Well, the focus is not on ink on a page. The focus is not on that book called the Bible. It what, didn't even exist for the first couple decades, many decades actually, after uh, the day of Pentecost. Your focus is on your walk with the Father God and with the Lord Jesus. Yeah, and, and that, you know, Hebrews 4.12, for instance. Hebrews 4.12 says that the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. And right away, pastors will go there and say, see, you've got to get in the chapter. You've got to read your two chapters a day and, and everything. The word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword, dividing between soul and spirit and the joints and the marrow and the thoughts and the intentions of the human heart. But folks, it's not the written word, it's not the ink on a page that they're writing about because they didn't have it when they wrote it. They didn't have the New Testament. Yes, they had the Old Testament, they didn't have the New Testament. They didn't, there was no way for people to learn about Jesus and learn what Jesus did, le learn about the ra ramifications, the consequences of the cross and what Jesus did. But Hebrews 4.13 says, And all things are open and naked before the eyes with whom we have to do, seeing then that we have a great high priest Jesus Christ, the righteous, who has ascended into heaven. Let us come boldly to the throne to receive mercy and grace and help to help in time of need. Hebrews 4.12, talking about the word of God that's sharper than any two-edged sword. It's not ink on a page. He's talking about the person of Jesus Christ. That is the focus of your relationship. You walk with the Father. You walk with Jesus. The scripture on the page is secondary. It's just there to help you. It's there. It's complementary. In fact, I'll, put, I'll say it this way, another way from another, another subject, uh, another perspective. God made his word purposely vague for a reason. What I mean by that is, uh, you know, Paul wrote 
and, and Jesus talked about in Mark chapter 12, what are the two most important commandments? Vertically, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and strength, and horizontally, love your neighbor as yourself. Paul wrote about that in the book of Romans. He says it's briefly summed up. Any command of God is briefly summed up in love your neighbor as yourself. Therefore, loving your neighbor fulfills the law. But it's so vague. How do I love my neighbor? You know, what situations do I apply that? What does that mean? It's vague for a reason. It's because you have to walk with him. He, it's vague, not so that you can just turn to chapter and verse and say, oh, this verse applies to my situation. It's vague so that you can turn to him and say, help me apply what your life to the, my situation. Is there a verse that supports this? Is there something you could give me a word on? But the focus is on him and your walk with him, not on the ink on the page. He made his word vague so that you could go to him for the specifics. He always moves from the vague to the specific. The the Logos, if you've been with me a while, you know I've talked about the Logos, which is the Word of God. It's this word translated word that Jesus became, Jesus is the Word of God. It's the Genesis through Revelation. It's the whole Word, the whole counsel of God. But out of that vague word, out of that Logos comes a rhema, a specific word to you. And that's why his word is vague. That's why it's Jesus is the Word of God, the Logos of God, the whole counsel of God, so that you can go to him and receive his specific instruction from him so that he moves from the vague to the specific. And that is why the scripture is so vague sometimes. Oh, it's pretty pointed. Yeah, forgive one another, etc. How do you do that? It says to forgive. How do you do that? You go to him to find the specifics. The scripture, the, the ink on the page is not the focus of your faith. Knowing him and walking with him is. Now, how do you balance that out? Well, in Scripture, you know, 2 Timothy 3.16 is very good. It says that all Scripture is inspired by God and profitable for rebuke and teaching and instruction in righteousness. It's inspired by God. What he means is the men of old were inspired. God breathed to them to write down specific things. In 2 Peter chapter 1, uh, verses 16 through 21, Peter says, "We." he said, you would be good to listen to me. We received not fun, cunning, uh, not fun. <laughs> fun fables, not cunningly devised fables of men, but we saw his majesty on the mountain. We heard the voice coming from the cloud that said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear him. He said, we received that majesty and that experience on the mountain with him. This is second Peter chapter one, verses 16 through 21. He says in verse 20, however, he says, but we have a more sure word of prophecy for no prophecy of scripture is is inspired by man but it was rather inspired by god that men of old wrote these things down as they were inspired as they were moved along by the holy spirit so right there peter says this as great as the mount of transfiguration was what he said in in verse 19 we have a more sure word that is no scripture is given of man's understanding and man's interpretation, but it was God inspired, God breathed, and they wrote it down accordingly. So what he says right there is, if you have somebody who claims to have had a spiritual dream and a spiritual vision that says this or that, the scripture is more carries more weight than their spiritual experience. So we walk with the Lord, we walk with the Father, but we understand any experience we have does answer to chapter and verse. We live in a blessed time where we do have Matthew through the Revelation. And we have that New Testament scripture as well as the Old Testament. And we can refer to that. And what Peter says here is, is that as great as the Mount of Transfiguration experience was, the more sure word is the chapter and verse. So what do you do about the, the, the interpretations of it that are out there, the 450 uh, choices in English? What do you do about it? You know, find find what works for you. Because, you know, there are, if you came along 2,000 years after someone wrote a letter, you would have many opinions about what that letter meant. So that's all it is. But you go to him to find out the specifics so that he can, by the Spirit, make that page jump off, that verse jump at you and say, wow, this is for you. You, you, your focus is the walk, your walk with the Father and your walk with the Lord. And you submit all experiences to the scripture. But which scripture you use, find something that the Holy Spirit can quicken to you. Let that be a compliment to your walk with him. Don't let it be the main thing. Scripture is not the main thing. It's your walk with him that's the main thing. All right. 
God bless. Food for thought, cwowi.org.